Imagine an invisible enemy, silently causing damage to the very building blocks of your life. This invisible enemy isn't a science fiction villain or a supernatural force from a horror film. It's something far more real and insidious. Wireless radiation. We're living in an age of technology where our lives are surrounded by wireless devices, from your smartphone to your Wi-Fi router, or the cell tower around the corner. With the advent of smartphones, we can use numerous wireless appliances while we sit in our recliner clicking the channel to our favorite reality show. We are constantly being bathed in a sea of electromagnetic fields or EMFs. Now, let's talk about a rather shocking statistic. It's estimated that the average person is exposed to the electromagnetic equivalent of roughly 50 X-rays per year just from their cell phone use. Yes, you heard that right. 50 X-rays worth of radiation every single year just from your phone. And that's not even counting exposure from other wireless devices or infrastructure. But what does this have to do with the building blocks of your life? Enter mitochondrial DNA. These tiny little powerhouses inside our cells are responsible for producing more than 90% of the energy our bodies need to function. They are essential for life and health, and they are incredibly vulnerable to damage from wireless radiation. Unlike the DNA in the nucleus of our cells, mitochondrial DNA lacks many of the protective mechanisms that help shield us from damage. This makes it particularly susceptible to the harmful effects of EMFs. Even small amounts of damage to mitochondrial DNA can have far-reaching consequences for our health. It can lead to a decrease in energy production, accelerate aging, and even contribute to the development of chronic diseases. So you might be wondering, why is this information not more widely known or discussed? Perhaps it's because the threat is invisible. We can't see wireless radiation. We can't smell it or taste it. But that doesn't mean it's not there, silently causing damage. This invisible enemy is wireless radiation and it's harming you more than you think. Meet Jane, a health enthusiast from a small town in Oregon. Jane was always full of energy, her days filled with hikes, yoga, and whole foods. But then, something shifted. She began to feel fatigued, a bone-deep tiredness that no amount of sleep could shake off. Headaches became her constant companions, and a host of other symptoms began to manifest, leaving her perplexed. She had always been a picture of health, so what had changed? It was then that Jane noticed a towering structure that had recently sprung up near her home. It was a cell tower, a silent sentinel that beamed invisible waves of wireless radiation all day, every day. Jane had heard about the potential health risks associated with prolonged exposure to wireless radiation. She had read about electromagnetic field or EMF radiation emitted by cell towers, cell phones, and wireless devices. She began to suspect that her proximity to the cell tower and its constant emission of wireless radiation might be the root cause of her declining health. Her suspicion was not unfounded. Research has shown that wireless radiation can cause damage to our mitochondrial DNA, the powerhouse of our cells. This damage can lead to a variety of health issues, including fatigue, headaches, and a weakened immune system, symptoms Jane had been experiencing. The more Jane learned about the health risks of wireless radiation, the more her suspicion grew. She realized she was not just fighting for her health, but also for the safety of her community and the entire world around her. Jane was not one to sit back and let things happen. She was a fighter, a woman of action. She decided to take her health into her own hands, to learn everything she could about wireless radiation and its effects on our bodies and find ways to protect herself and her community from this silent, invisible threat. In the rest of this video, you're going to learn that you and Jane have quite a bit in common because your mitochondria are constantly being bombarded with invisible high-frequency radiation. Don't freak out just yet. I'm going to present some simple changes that will help protect your body from the untoward effects of this cacophony of electronic radiation that surrounds you no matter where you go. Now, let's dive into the science behind wireless radiation and its impact on our health. Various scientific studies have shown that wireless radiation emitted by cell towers and other wireless devices can damage our mitochondrial DNA. Mitochondrial DNA is the powerhouse of our cells, providing the energy needed for cellular functions. When this DNA is damaged, it can lead to a host of health issues, including fatigue, headaches, a weakened immune system, and even cancer. But how does wireless radiation cause this damage? The answer lies in oxidative stress. Wireless radiation can cause an increase in reactive oxygen species, or ROS, in our cells. These ROS are highly reactive and can cause damage to cellular components, including our mitochondrial DNA. 
This process known as oxidative stress can lead to cellular dysfunction and even cell death. Our mitochondrial DNA or mtDNA is the blueprint for the energy factories of our cells, the mitochondria. They're crucial for our health and well-being, and any damage to our mtDNA can lead to a myriad of health issues. The mitochondria are the powerhouses of our body that create the energy necessary for nearly every process in the body. And while our bodies are equipped with mechanisms to repair this DNA, continuous exposure to wireless radiation can overwhelm these defenses, leading to irreversible damage. The potential long-term health risks associated with continuous exposure to wireless radiation are alarming. Many researchers now believe that cell phones may turn out to be the cigarettes of the 21st century, and that radiation level limits are based on outdated studies of outdated technology, and that government and industry have no interest in studying or even reviewing the results of studies. My husband Tim brought home a set of wireless headphones the other night and the box contained a cancer warning. So let's look at a bit of the research on non-iodizing radiation and its effects on our bodies. In 2011, the International Journal of Oncology published that Leonard Hardell and his team found an increased risk for glioma, a type of brain cancer, from the use of mobile or cordless phones, specifically around the area where the mobile phone is used. The risk accumulated and was highest in subjects who started using cell phones before the age of 20. In 2017, the Journal of Clinical and Diagnostic Research posted a study with 2G and 3G cell phones on chicken embryos and found that chronic exposure of the embryo resulted in various structural changes and DNA damage. In 2019, seven experts published an article in Frontiers in Public Health citing three large-scale cancer studies in rodents exposed to levels of RFR that mimic lifetime human exposures. The studies show significantly increased rates of schwannomas of the heart and malignant gliomas of the brain, as well as chromosomal DNA damage. Let's move on to March 2023 when the Maine legislature testified that studies show that children absorb more intense levels of wireless radiation deeper and more intensely into their brain because they have thinner skulls, smaller heads, and a higher water content in their brains. More importantly, children are more vulnerable to wireless radiation because their rapidly developing brains are more sensitive. Even very low-level toxic exposures at a critical time in development can result in serious effects later in life. Recently, in April of 2023, the International Commission on the Biological Effects of Magnetic Fields advised that current allowable emission limits are based on results from a study conducted in the 1980s involving about one-hour exposure in five monkeys and eight rats. Since that time, studies have shown elevated reactive oxygen species, DNA damage, cardiomyopathy, carcinogenicity, sperm damage, and neurological effects at lower limits. Also, multiple human studies have found statistically significant associations between RFR exposure and increased brain and thyroid cancer risk. The American Academy of Physicians has long called for an update to cell phone radiation regulations because research finds children can absorb up to 10 or more times higher radiation than adults into their brain, eyes, and bone marrow. Yet the allowable limits of radiation have not been reduced, and the risk of exposures to users does not appear as a priority with most cell phone manufacturers and lawmakers, in spite of the fact that 4G and 5G has pervaded every inch of living and work environments. Since it is clearly up to us to protect ourselves against the insidious threat that our wireless world presents, we will now look at some practices you can adopt and some products that you can purchase to help reduce the absorption and exposure of electronic radiation. We're living in a world that's more connected than ever thanks to wireless technology. Our cell phones, laptops, Wi-Fi routers, Bluetooth speakers, smart home devices, and even baby monitors are all sources of wireless radiation. So what can we do? Should we toss out our cell phones and return to the Stone Age? Not quite. The key here is to reduce our exposure. Reducing exposure to wireless radiation involves adopting practices that minimize your proximity to devices emitting electromagnetic fields, EMFs, and implementing habits that promote a healthier use of technology. Here are some practical ways to reduce exposure to wireless radiation. Use speakerphone or wired headsets. Text message instead of calling whenever possible to minimize direct contact with your phone. Limit mobile phone use in weak signal areas. In areas with weak signals, mobile phones increase their power to connect to the network. Limiting use in such areas can reduce overall radiation exposure. Keep devices at a distance. Avoid carrying your mobile phone directly on your body. Instead, use a bag or place it in a pocket away from sensitive areas. Use airplane mode. 
Switch your device to airplane mode when not actively using wireless functions. This prevents constant communication with cell towers. Turn off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Disable Wi-Fi and Bluetooth when not in use, especially during the night or when not connected to any networks. Hardwire devices. Whenever possible, use wired connections, Ethernet, for internet access instead of relying on Wi-Fi. This is especially applicable for desktop computers and gaming consoles. Limit smart home devices. Reduce the number of smart home devices and opt for wired alternatives when available. Create EMF-free zones. Designate specific areas in your home, such as bedrooms, as EMF-free zones where wireless devices are turned off during certain hours. Use EMF shields and cases. Consider using Faraday-based shields or cases designed to reduce radiation exposure for devices like mobile phones and laptops. Explore their Faraday-based products such as curtains, clothing, and bedding, or make your own with a thin sheet of metal. Because Faraday technology uses metal shielding materials such as copper, aluminum, and other metals. Remember the conspiracy theorists wearing tinfoil hats? Maybe they weren't as crazy as you thought. Faraday shields are inexpensive and readily available online. Choose low EMF appliances. When purchasing new electronic devices, instead of buying the most powerful devices, consider those with lower EMF emissions, specifically ones with lower specific absorption rates or SAR values. Avoid keeping devices close while sleeping. Keep electronic devices away from your bedside table to minimize exposure during sleep. Use wired baby monitors. Consider EMF-reducing products such as tachyon technology, which is purported to destroy wireless radiation with particles that theoretically move faster than the speed of light. Many scientists are not convinced that tachyons exists, but the pendants are cheap, and I bought one just in case. There are also some dietary changes that you can make to decrease the oxidative stress on your body. Antioxidant foods are rich in compounds that help neutralize free radicals in the body and include berries including blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, and blackberries are loaded with antioxidants like anthocyanins, quercetin, and vitamin C. Dark chocolate contains flavonoids, polyphenols, and catechins that have antioxidant properties. Choose chocolate with a high cocoa content for maximum benefits. Nuts such as almonds, walnuts, and hazelnuts are good sources of vitamin E, which acts as a potent antioxidant. They also provide healthy fats and other essential nutrients. Fruits like oranges, lemons, grapefruits, kiwi, mangoes, and papayas are rich in vitamin C, an antioxidant that supports the immune system. Vegetables including dark leafy greens such as spinach and kale, and cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and cabbage. Don't forget carrots, sweet potatoes, and bell peppers. All of these vegetables contain various antioxidants such as vitamins A, C, and E, as well as phytochemicals and other antioxidants. Green tea is rich in catechins, particularly EGCG, which has powerful antioxidant properties. Red grapes and their products, such as red wine, contain resveratrol, a polyphenol with antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects. Tomatoes are a good source of lycopene, a powerful antioxidant associated with various health benefits, including heart health. Seeds such as chia seeds, flax seeds, and sunflower seeds are good sources of antioxidants, including vitamin E. And our last food high in antioxidants is fatty fish, such as salmon and mackerel, which provide omega-3 fatty acids and selenium, both of which have antioxidant properties. It's time to take control and protect your mitochondrial DNA, because at the end of the day, it's not just about staying connected, it's about staying healthy too. Now we are going to give you one last way to protect yourself from wireless radiation. You can't buy it in a store, but you have plenty of it. Energy. Directed energy has been practiced for centuries all over the world. Directed energy is a healing mechanism where you focus on directing all of your internal energy to creating a protective shield around your body. Sit down with your eyes closed. Imagine a protective bubble around your body with radiation bouncing off it. The more emotion and focus you muster up, the more effective. Tell your mind to emit this protective energy all through the day. Believe it in your soul. Open your eyes and go about your day, perhaps reminding yourself of the protective barrier that you created every now and then. Well, that's all we have for you. In a rapidly evolving technology, sometimes the technology grows before our understanding of it. That is what is happening with the wireless world we live in, but with a little knowledge and a few changes, we can limit the R amount of exposure to a technology that could create debilitating conditions years down the road. If you found this video helpful, 
please share it with your friends and family. Help them break free of the unseen harm that extensive wireless use may be causing. Share because you love them. I love to create content that can help people combat disease and illness. If you'd like more videos like this one, please subscribe to my channel. And of course, I am always anxious to hear comments and input on how I can make my channel better. So before you leave, like, share and subscribe and don't forget to look at the attachments and links in my description for additional resources on this important topic. Until next time, be healthy and happy.